Welcome back to Project 500, where we teach you how to half the amount of time you spend counting your bar's inventory each period by doubling your counting speed up to 500 items per hour. So here in hack number 14, we're going to talk about two different techniques for mapping out your kegs. So let me explain the two techniques, and then you can choose which one's going to work. So either you're going to use a combo approach or a partials and full separately. So combo approach, if you have obviously a setup in your uh, draft beer cooler where you have tap lines and often you've got a tapped keg sitting on top of or with the other full kegs for that area right next door and if you have space for that i suggest using a combo approach in contrast if you have insufficient storage to do that or for whatever reason your full kegs generally are not kept right in front of the keg they're about to replace which is already tapped often you've got an area which is more conducive to having tapped kegs as one zone full kegs as another zone Let's go back to combo first of all. So for those of you that have the partial keg sitting on top of the full keg with others there right next to the partial keg, the technique here involves just putting two lines for every uh, item. So if the first item is you go keg Budweiser, then keg Bud Light, then Coors Light, we've got two lines for Budweiser, meaning that we can count or ideally weigh or shake, but ideally weigh that first keg and have one line for the partial. And then if there's one backup keg or 15, we count those on the second line. And then we move on to Bud Light, and that's a you know a keg weighs 140 pounds, and there's three backed up. So by having that combo approach, we've got one line for the partial and one line for the fulls together. That's a good organized way to speed you up. For those of you that are keeping the fulls separate from the partials, map out your partial zone, call it partial kegs or tapped kegs, and obviously flow from left to right um, in the same order as they're attached to the wall. And then the, cre the key bit, apart from organization here on the full kegs, is on your full kegs, make a map for full kegs, and rather than keep them in the physical order they are, because they're never gonna be the same, those 15 full kegs are always a jumble. So what you wanna do is in the full keg zone, make an alphabetical list of those 10 kegs. Um, and what that means is kegs are annoying to map because they don't have barcodes. And so changing the map is more uh, time consuming than it would be if it was liquor bottles. So what we suggest, one exception to true shelf to sheet uh, usage of the software is keep an alphabetical list of all the kegs that you have in stock. Um, and then when you add new kegs, obviously slot it into the right alphabetical spot. And it means then that when you're counting these kegs, you can look at the first keg on the left, find it quickly and add it, add the count. Second keg, find it in the alphabetical list, mark it quickly. I know I'm going backwards here by telling you to keep an alphabetical list when we are you know, going against that. But in this specific situation, it makes sense because it saves you having to change the map a lot um, and that slows you down when the products category doesn't have barcodes. So either using a combo approach or a partial and fulls approach to map out your kegs is a good way to save a few minutes off your counting um, of the obviously more physical task of uh, counting those kegs. Thanks for watching.